Here's more wrestling news for October 28th, 2021. And your headlines for this afternoon include WWE is rushing the Seth Rollins Big E Championship feud. They can't get legitimate heat out of it. Jim Cornette reveals why Sting MJF segment on AEW Dynamite was a flop. Tommy Dreamer returns to Busted Open Radio. Ex-WWE wrestler denies speaking to Tony Khan about joining AEW broadcast team. Tony Nese confirms signing with AEW. Brooke Hogan shares update on Hulk Hogan's current health. WWE locks down The Undertaker's name in a big way. WWE launches NFT marketplace for digital collectibles. Backstage producer responsibilities during WWE SmackDown last week. Hikaru Shida reaches huge milestone in AEW on Dynamite this week, and more. We're starting off today with Seth Rollins, who earned a shot against WWE Champion Big E on this week's Raw. Winning an epic Fatal 4-Way ladder match to earn a title opportunity, we're expecting a great match between the champion and challenger, albeit a match that'll happen far too soon. The last time Rollins and Big E had a one-on-one -on -one match was on a 2014 edition of Main Event, and both men have changed so dramatically since then that their new feud is completely fresh, a rarity in WWE these days. Before 2014's Main Event, the pair had matches in NXT and FCW, but this new story would be one fans haven't seen before. A rich story between the two could be told, as Rollins and Big E are the first and second NXT champions respectively, and their feud could be used to show how NXT 2.0 is important in making the next generation of superstars. There's plenty of comparisons between the two, as after being NXT champions, both men went on to be a part of popular three-man stables before taking their spot as WWE World Champions. Instead of an epic story that plays on their past and could be used to promote NXT 2.0, what we'll get is a title match that'll likely happen on a random episode of Raw. With November's Survivor Series booked already as WWE Champion vs Universal Champion and no pay-per-view in December, the earliest this match could happen on pay-per-view is WWE Day 1 on January 1st, over two months away. WWE's short-term booking makes it highly unlikely they'll wait that long, and they certainly won't be waiting to put the match on at the Royal Rumble at the end of January. If WWE doesn't have plans for the title match on pay-per-view, then it's arguable that Finn Balor or Kevin Owens should have won last Monday's ladder match. Balor is a babyface, but not a full-on babyface, as his recent loss to Xavier Woods in the King of the Ring finals would have helped drive the narrative. Although Finn has been losing quite a bit lately, another loss wouldn't have done him much harm, especially for the WWE Championship. As for Owens, his contract is expiring soon, and we can't say if he'll stay with WWE or not, giving him one last title opportunity would have been a nice gesture. Rey Mysterio was the only man in the ladder match who shouldn't have won, as the always over Rey Mysterio would have been cheered over the WWE Champion. Fans only have to look at the recent angle between US Champion Damian Priest and Jeff Hardy to realize why booking established faces over younger faces can be counterproductive, and having Ray lose to Big E would have done neither man any favors. Rollins vs Big E will be a great match, but it's one WWE could have saved for the Royal Rumble or even WrestleMania, but they decided to hotshot the feud for a TV match that won't have the same story or impact it could have had. On last week's Dynamite, MJF interrupted the icon Sting before the WWE Hall of Famer could give an update on the injured Darby Allin. Allin's injury came thanks to a backstage attack a few weeks prior, seemingly at the hands of MJF, who also destroyed Sting this time around with the help of Sean Spears and Wardlow. Sting's beatdown was a lengthy process, and on his drive through podcast, Jim Cornette bashed the booking as nobody even attempted to make the save. He said, Again, nobody's trying to stop it, nobody trying to get in the ring. It went on long enough and they got Sting beaten and helpless. Wouldn't some friend of his in the locker room, wouldn't Tony Khan, the benevolent Tony Khan, says referees stop this carnage, or do we have security down at ringside? Cornette added that the lack of help for Sting prevented the segment from getting legitimate heat, and that back in the day, fans would have hopped the guardrail in segments because they were so believable, whilst this felt like a play. He explained, the people in the building could see other people trying and failing to prevent this shit from going on, and they feel like they had to take it upon themselves. But the people here at AEW in the building see that nobody's trying to stop it. This is obviously a setup, sports entertainment happening, a skit, a play, and that's why they can't get legitimate heat out of it because there's nothing to lose yourself in. 
With full gear around the corner, it seems that Sting and Allen are gearing up for a pay-per-view match with MJF and the Pinnacle, but Cornette hasn't been excited with the build to the match at all. When Vice's Dark Side of the Ring episode on the plane ride from hell dropped earlier this year, fans were outraged at the actions of Ric Flair, but Tommy Dreamer wasn't. Instead, Dreamer called the actions by Flair, who allegedly forced a flight attendant to touch his genitals, a joke and that somebody took offense to it, comments which got him suspended from Busted Open Radio. This week, Dreamer marked his return to the show, reviewing NXT Halloween Havoc and paid tribute to Daphne in a segment featuring former WCW wrestler Crowbar. No mention was made on the show about Dreamer's absence, nor was it explained why his absence had ended. After his comments on Dark Side of the Ring, Dreamer was also suspended from his roles with Impact Wrestling, and though he's not returned, he was promoting Bound for Glory on social media this past weekend. Busted Open didn't promote Dreamer's return on social media prior to his appearance, but the former ECW World Champion is looking to put his controversial comments behind him now that he's back on the show. After SummerSlam 2020, Renee Paquette left WWE and has been working on her own projects ever since. The host of both oral sessions and throwing down with Renee and Misha Tate, the Canadian announcer hasn't appeared in any other promotion than WWE, despite a vocal group of fans expecting to see her arrive in AEW. In an interview with Ariel Helwani, Renee discussed the rumors of her joining AEW and quickly refuted the idea that it could happen soon. I've never talked to Tony Khan about it, ever. It's never come up, I'm sure there could be a million different things that I could do there. Paquette added that she hopes it happens at some point, as she thinks it'd be a fun experience to work for another wrestling company after only ever working for WWE. Renee has been the subject of rumors about AEW for some time, but those rumors weren't based on any accurate reports, similar to the rumors that Bray Wyatt would be joining when AEW recently went to Rochester, New York. Perhaps Renee will one day be a presence on AEW programming, as she's been backstage at some of their shows in the past, but for now, the former WWE commentator hasn't even gotten close to striking a deal with Tony Khan. Renee Paquette may not be joining AEW just yet, but Tony Nese recently appeared during last week's episode of Dynamite, and was described by commentary as one of the hottest free agents in pro wrestling. At the time, it wasn't known if Nice's appearance was a one-off or the start of something big, but we now know the former WWE Cruiserweight Champion is here to stay. Speaking to Chris Van Vliet on Insight, Nice confirmed that he signed with AEW, calling it a blessing. Nice has already made his in-ring debut during the latest AEW Dark tapings and has even hinted at squaring off against Adam Cole, and the former superstar will have the chance to do just that now that he's All Elite. Hulk Hogan is one of wrestling's biggest and most controversial stars, as the Hulkster's name is remembered for both his accomplishments in wrestling and his unsavory comments from 2015 and his backstage politicking. Whatever you think about Hogan, one thing for sure is that Hogan is getting old and was hospitalized last year for a serious MRSA infection, which required physical therapy for Hogan to regain his strength. Speaking on the Hollywood Raw podcast, Hogan's daughter Brooke gave a good prognosis on her dad, saying, He's had so many surgeries, he's done a ton, but this last one that he just had finally was like the winning ticket, so right now he's feeling great. He's working out two hours in the gym every day, he's still chugging along. The Hulkster has had 10 surgeries on his back alone since 2009, meaning he's had to undergo a great deal of pain, but we hope this last operation has finally done the trick for the former WWF World Champion. It's been nearly a year since The Undertaker's final farewell at Survivor Series 2020, but the Phenom is still a huge name with a huge Legends contract. As one of wrestling's most recognizable stars, The Deadman is still a huge draw, and now the company has locked down The Undertaker name. This new trademark for Undertaker covers the obvious things like action figures and video games to the more bizarre like toy guitars and kites, meaning fans will soon have plenty of extra Undertaker licensed merchandise to buy on WWEshop.com. The WWE has been getting a lot of business deals done as of late, including signing a new trading card deal with Panini card manufacturers. Now WWE have made a new entry into the world of non-fungible tokens, as in a press release posted by PW Insider, the company announced a partnership with Blockchain Creative Labs, Fox Entertainment, and Bento Box Entertainment. 
This partnership will see fans be offered limited edition digital collectibles, and WWE's Senior VP of Strategy and Development Scott Zangalini was excited about being able to quote, explore new and creative ways to engage our passionate fan base. This partnership is banking on exclusivity for the NFT's driving demand by fans, but after John Cena's SummerSlam NFT, which undersold and was called a catastrophic failure by Cena himself, WWE's decision to return to these non-fungible tokens is an interesting one. SmackDown News Now as last Friday's title exchange didn't go according to plan. The segment, which saw Charlotte Flair and Becky Lynch exchange their respective women's titles, saw Charlotte go off script dropping the title on the floor instead of the planned spot in which Lynch would have grabbed both belts. We now know who was behind the spot, as a report from Fightful Select has revealed that the title exchange was produced backstage by Adam Pearce and Molly Holly. Needless to say, the segment last Friday that Pearce and Holly envisioned wasn't what fans ultimately saw on TV, and we'll have to see what Charlotte Flair does this Friday if the SmackDown Women's Champion is on the show at all. Charlotte Flair was slated to do various media appearances this week to promote WWE, which would have been very interesting to see how she would answer questions regarding the incident with Becky Lynch on last week's episode of Friday Night SmackDown. However, Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful noted on Twitter that Flair has been pulled from those appearances. This is likely a temporary thing, but the timing is interesting. It's unknown whether Flair will be appearing on this Friday's SmackDown to further build her feud with Sasha Banks. There's been no reports regarding whether WWE will punish Flair for the incident with Lynch and Sonya Deville, but the company is said to be in a tricky situation. We will have to see what happens in this situation. Those close to Flair are reportedly trying to get her to cause WWE to release her. At this time, she's still under contract and has years left with the company. AEW News Next It's being reported that lots and lots of fans left during last night's AEW Rampage taping in Boston, Massachusetts. As usual, the taping took place after Dynamite, which itself took place after Dark Elevation tapings, which is something that a lot of people have pointed out as a potential flaw because a crowd can easily get worn out on so much wrestling. Speaking on Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer said that fans left after the Brian Danielson vs. Eddie Kingston match, which was the first of three Rampage matches. The two that followed were Dante Martin vs. Matt Seidel and Britt Baker vs. Abaddon. Meltzer said, Next was Dante Martin against Matt Seidel. The match was good. One of the things though is that the crowd chanted they were doing a lot of wrestling and they were doing less acrobatics than in their previous matches, and the crowd was chanting, we want flips, so they were not appreciative of the mat work. Also, I'm gonna say this, and this is not a social experiment, but it is a social experiment at the same time. Lots and lots of people left after the Eddie kingston Brian Danielson match. Many, 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 many people. That absolutely happened. Just like at the show we mentioned before with Alexa Bliss and Charlotte Flair. It absolutely happened. So I can get all this hate mail, or I won't, because it happened. Tony Khan believes that everything is under control regarding AEW Rampage. However, others do not feel this is the case, as AEW Rampage's ratings continue to drop every week. Fans leaving the arena after the first match certainly does not help matters either, so we certainly wonder what the company will do to remedy this situation. And we're ending today with Hikaru Shida, who defeated Serena Deeb on last night's Dynamite, giving Shida her 50th win. Not only did Shida get her 50th win, something AEW have teased a couple of weeks ago, but she also advanced in the TBS Championship Tournament. And as the first woman in AEW to rack up 50 victories, we have to consider Shida a favorite to become the first ever AEW TBS Champion. Well guys, that's our news for today. Please share your comments below. Also hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon to receive all notifications. And as always, thanks for watching.